Hello and welcome to another Comfy UI tutorial. Today we'll be looking at an SDXL character creator workflow where we can create consistent characters. It's a workflow based on the videos of Latent Vision. He's the developer of IP adapters. So if you want a really in-depth look in how to build this workflow, you should definitely hop over to Latent Vision and check out his video on uh, how to do this. And of course, I also updated the face modules to the current new ones to have a bit better stability of the face. As always, I'll be linking the workflow in the description down below. And this time we will not be building the workflow from scratch. However, I'll be going over each particular segment of this workflow and we will create a new character as I think you guys are already familiar with most of the concepts that are at use in this workflow is just several parts that come together in one final prompt. And we use the previous generations to guide our IP adapter through masking and all of that good stuff so that we can come to a consistent character. Okay. So starting off first, we do the face. So. This is the, the first part of the workflow where we make a face. Here we use a uh, control nut in order to have a consistent placement of the face uh, because we need to crop out a square. Why do we crop out a square? It's because IP adapter works with square images and we also need to prepare them for clip vision. For the regular IP adapter, although for face ID it's not necessary, but it still needs to be a square image and preferably for the, the plus face model, just the face and not the shoulders and all of that good stuff. So we crop this image and here we generate only the face and we will already give a prompt. In this case, it's one boy with uh, black short hair with beautiful eyes looking at the viewer in a casual sporty outfit. The one thing we take away from this first initial part is the the positive conditioning so we will take this positive conditioning and concatenate it with the next positive conditioning so here in the next part of this workflow we will focus on the clothing and only give the standing pose as as a prompt as it can already take the the prompt from our previous conditioning right okay so what do we do here we give it a slight short prompt saying it's a standing pose. So we get the standing guy. We also have a control net to guide the positioning and the body. We have uh, a second pass here, as you have seen in my previous video. In this case, I'm just using the latent upscaler in order to save on VRAM. Uh, then we resize it because we don't want to double the size, but we want more detail. And then we decode it. So we have our little preview here. We will crop these, these two, these parts into two squares for our IP adapters to handle. So this will be these squares. So we have our face, our torso, and our legs. And these will be driving parts of our last part of the workflow. Okay, once you have the face and the body generating, you can basically start winding up your IP adapters. So for the first part, we want to do the face. So in this case, I'm using the face idea plus V2. Remember to use the LoRa and to also toggle the face ID V2 button. We also use a mask here. That is the attention mask that drives this IP adapter as well as this IP adapter. So after that, we have our torso. We have our image for our torso. This is our attention mask, right? Attention mask. Here, our torso gets prepared for clip vision. As you can see, this is this image right here. And lastly, we have our legs. Here is the attention mask. And here our image goes to our clip vision as well as to our IP adapter. Of course, don't forget to loop your IP adapter models from one to the other, right? And lastly, we have our final generation. 
this is the final prompt right here. And here we can say, so let's say posing in dense tropical forest. We will run this in a minute. And we also have a control not going. Don't mind these, this is a bug. So don't worry, it's just previewing wrongly from a previous project. However, here we have our control net, control net apply, and we load our full body image here because we also want to keep the same pose as in this one, just for example purposes. You can of course change the pose to whatever you need. Uh, it doesn't really matter as the clothing and the face will still be consistent. Okay. so. Once we run our case sampler, we're going to decode it. And this time we're going to do a pixel update. So as you saw in my previous video, the best quality can be achieved by using a pixel upscale. So using a model. So we're using upscale image using model. We're using four times full hardy. And because we only want to upscale two times, we will have an, the upscale image. Um, with this note. So this is again, like a second pass, like high risk fix. So we'll be using the latent of our previous case sampler, um, which gets encoded here and we parse it through our case sampler. And then last but not least, we will decode our image and go through a face detailer. The only important thing to keep in mind for the face detailer is to take the model coming from this IP adapter. So for the one responsible for the face, because otherwise you also get influences from the other IP adapters and we don't want that. Right. Okay. I believe that's the workflow. We also have a desaturation note here because I felt like the images were slightly oversaturated. So I desaturated them ever so slightly. However, if you're working with another model, that might not be the case and you might want to delete this particular node. Okay. Now let's change our character to one girl with red hair, short red hair. There we go. And I'll run it once so you guys can see how this works. This is what our generation looks like. As you can see, it stayed true to the original pullover. We have the sporty legs as well as a lot of resemblance on the face and a few iterations to choose from. So this was the video. I hope you like it, dislike it. I'm out. Consider subscribing. Cheers. Bye.